Good evening all. Welcome back to another little bit of Lisp. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at wrapping um, C libraries, mainly actually generating bindings for C libraries, so you don't have to do all that kind of stuff manually. Um, let's kick off just by saying hello to who's hanging around. So good evening to Darius and Davix Unit and Elevator Simulator. G Deputy D, DDT, can't, no, I'm giving up on that one. Infinicil, Nobo, Pondipimp, R Primus, and so let's... Hello to the new people and good evening to the old muckety mucks have been around for a while. Good to see you all. Um, yeah, let's have a play with this. Originally, I was going to split this in two into a kind of um, pushing pixels. Sorry, a little bits of Lisp first and then a bit of pushing pixels later. Uh, but I might do more on the uh, binding side than I was originally planning. So anyway, let's just let's just start mucking around with this stuff. Why do this? Um, there are a lot of cool libraries out there in, that have already been written and like well tested. The only problem is they're written in some other language. So we want to be able to use all that work that's been done, leverage all that power, but stay in an environment that like treats us very well. In that case, for us at least, it's Common Lisp. Um, and also, of course, that there like there is no best language uh, for everything. There are languages that are very good in their specific domains. And so being able to talk across language boundaries is probably the most important feature um, of a kind of working language. Uh, it's certainly one that I'm very adamant about having whatever language I want to work in, if it's for a serious project. So I was looking at this the other day, which is just super cool. There's this library called lib5. And it's for, um, yeah, it, it's for doing kind of... Um, what do they call it? Constructive solid geometry? I think that might be it. It's when you uh, take like lots of primitive shapes and union them and difference them together and you can build, basically program 3D models. And it's often used, uh, like there's a language called OpenSCAD, uh, which is used a lot for this and is used a lot in 3D printing. So you can write programs that generate different kinds of gears and all that kind of stuff. I think this is dope. Um, and this guy's uh, um, got this library, made this library, uh, has a C API for it, and then has um, got bindings for different languages. And his main one, obviously, he's using, or she's using, is Scheme. Um, and yeah, it's just really cool. But I don't fancy switching to Scheme just to try it out. I would really like to be able to play with it with Keppel and all the other kind of stuff we've been doing on different streams. So obviously, the goal is to, to wrap this. And then over either later this episode or... Other episodes we'll do actually playing around with it and seeing if we can get some some graphics going. But that'll be more pushing pixel stuff. Back to the uh, the little bits of Lisp lesson kind of thing is we want we want this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and find the library. Um, so standard C project or C++ project. Clone this. Uh, and I'm not going to explain how to build it. Um, that's kind of out of scope because those can be different um, on different things. But just to know that under C, where is it, lib5, I have this project, and I've already built it. And in here, we can find things like the resulting binary and all that kind of stuff. And around here somewhere, uh, probably in here, actually. Oh, no, not sure where it is. Back here, actually, there'll probably be some header files. So, yeah, this has... All the, uh, all the definitions of the functions we want to be able to talk to in this C API. So that's going to come back in soon. Now, to be able to um, to talk to this library, we already have um, CFFI, uh, which is the fantastic FFI that's available for Common Lisp. Um, and that is plenty enough. You can like write a definition, say, hey, this is the library I'm, I'm wrapping, and then you can write a definition for every function uh, that you want to talk to. Like, we, we looked a bit at this in one of the other little bits of Lisp. Um, but that's a lot of work, and so we want to skip that, especially if you just want to try something out and see if it's going to play well in that environment. Um, I'm sorry to chat that I haven't, I've kind of been monologuing for a bit. I will be with you really soon. Um, so we are going to use a tool for that, and one of the ones that's very often used in Common Lisp is CL Auto Route. This thing is awesome, um, and it's built on top of another library we'll get to in a second called C2FFI. What this does is, um, actually we will go through to C2FFI first. Um, this thing uses this library, or this program, 
And this program is very cool. What it does is it, it uses Clang and it takes header files and it extracts all the information that it can from the header files and dumps them out as JSON. And then this project can take all that JSON and generate Lisp code, all of the binding, inf all the bindings to actually use the library. So in one step, and it really can be a single line, uh, you get full bindings for an entire C library and you're good to go, which is fucking awesome. Um, so yes, that is where we are going to go. Um, let's just see what's going on in the chat, seeing as I've been yakking a lot. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Oh, this is awesome. Pushing little bits of Keppel. Yes, exactly, Darius. Formon, hello. Haven't seen you around here before, so welcome. Um, Dave X Unit saying lib5 is sweet. Just switch everything to Guile. Come on, no. No, I'm happy in my little house made of Lisp. Um, so, to be able to use CL Auto Wrap, to, to use it for um, creating fresh bindings, and we'll get into what all this kind of the details later, we're going to need this. And this is a, I guess, C++ project. Yep. And so what you're going to do is you're going to clone this library. Um, I've got it down in the C++ and C2FFI. And you're going to come in here. You'll probably make a build directory. And then inside here, you would, um, I think it just, you just have to do um, CMake on the parent directory. Let that run. That's going to tell you if you haven't got the dependencies and basically set up the project ready to go. And once that's finished, you type make, hit return, let it build. I'm not going to do it now because it takes like three or so minutes or two minutes, whatever. It's long enough that the pause would be noticeable on the stream. It's going to build. What is like, what is nice is, the, actually, the reason I'm doing this stream now is this used to be a bit more difficult to set up because C2FFI really closely followed um, the releases of LLVM. And so you had to build LLVM yourself. You had to do it on your local machine. That takes a lot of time. It can be a bit of a faff. This hasn't really um, changed since LLVM 5. And LLVM 5 is available in like the standard Debian repos now. So if you're on Ubuntu, you can just pull um, like libclang, dev, and all this kind of stuff. All the dependencies that you need, you can just pull through apt. And then you're ready to go. And that just made the whole process a lot easier. So let CMake and make tell you what you need. Get that stuff. Build C2FFI, which is much easier these days, just following like roughly the steps I was saying. And then you're gonna have a binary, this guy here. And this is the program that uses Clang to generate these what we will see are spec files, which are big blobs of JSON with all the information about that it can find from a header file. Right, so when that's done. When that's done, I'm going to look at chat and see what's going on. Um, Formon, haven't been around before. Watched a lot of your stuff on YouTube and I found it interesting. Cheers, man. Lovely to have you here and on YouTube. Uh, so let's... Ah, typing on an iPad. Am I supposed to see a video stream already? Yes, you are. Um, you might want to like just refresh the page if or restart the app if you're on something there. Because you know, Twitch can be a little janky with uh, starting and stuff like that sometimes. Marianne, hey, good to see you. <laughs> yeah, Marianne, park. Don't drive and watch this. It's not good for anyone. Except me. My ego. Right. So let's assume that we've uh, got ourselves a C library. We've got it built. We've got CF, uh, C2FFI. We've got the dependencies. We built that. We know where the, the uh, binary is. Now we need to... Um, Use auto wrap. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a um, a list project. Oh, I've already got a REPL going. Let's uh, bring that up. I'm going to start a new project. So first thing I'm just going to do is I'm going to make sure that my REPL, um, its default directory is my code slash Lisp uh, folder. So I'm metarex and then do slime set default directory. It was already there. I'm looking down the mini buffer at the moment. I know I'm pointing again. Sorry about that. Down here. So I'm just going to hit return and I know I'm in the right direction. The reason I'm doing that is um, that when I use quick project and say make project without a full path, it's just going to put it in the current directory. So I'm going to do QL quick load um, quick project, which is just a really easy way to get a project going. So let's do a quick project, make project. 
And we're going to call this, we're wrapping high five, so let's call it, um, sorry, we're wrapping lib five, so let's call it high five. Um, yeah. So now over here, high five is a directory we've already got. So there we go. So it has set us up an ASD file. Um, we've got a little Lisp file, which is pretty much empty, a package file, and an, a readme that's all templated out. So we are going to need, let me just check my notes here because I don't want to miss anything. Um, wait a second, is that the one I want? Yes, okay, so I'm going to go into the ASD file. I'm going to add a depends on. And we're going to be using the seal auto wrap. And yeah, I think that's the only dependency we actually need right now. And we're going to do a couple of things. I'm going to, the way that it can be nice to um, structure a library is you can have one package where all the generated bindings are. So it's like basically your, your raw C functions. And then another package which actually has the higher level stuff. Because as soon as you start using it, you're going to see things that are not very lispy, but are trivial to wrap. So you'll build kind of like higher level APIs on top. So I've got high five, which is going to be my user facing kind of API. And then behind the scenes, I'm going to have one called lib5, which just matches the name of the, uh, the project in general. So let's do that. Um, I, will use, I will include CL in this package. I think that'll be fine. And then let's make a lib5.lisp file. Um, I'm just going to say in package lib5 here. And we want to add that to the build. So before high five, there will be lib5. And now let's quick load this project. High five. Cool. Now we can actually start using CL auto wrap. So let's just jump to its readme and see how it expects you to use these things. Um, we'll go into libffi very soon. Uh, I know our include was slightly, our depends on was very slightly different. We just had seal auto wrap. We'll get there. Um, the basic usage is you just write this, c include and the header file. So actually we should get our header file somewhere that's more convenient for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a folder called spec. Uh, so make dear spec. And then I'm going to go to that C project, go to lib5, go to, what is it? Oh, it's just called lib5, and then include. I'm going to copy this file to our spec directory. And if we go in here now, we can see it's arrived. And I think we're almost ready. So let's do what it was saying here, which is C, include, and I need to put auto wrap in front because I haven't used that package. I don't want to pull all of that in. Um, and then for now, I'm going to actually, no, let's do, let's do it properly. Let's do ASDF system relative path name. And then the system um, name is high five. And the path is spec and then uh, lib five. Sorry, I just auto completed there. So it put, made it an absolute path, but this is what we want. C include is a macro and it's a macro that does a hell of a lot of stuff. So what it's going to do is when we expand it, when you compile at compile time, it's going to call um, C to FFI, which is going to get Clang to dump out um, all the JSON information or all the information that it can extract from this header file. And then it's going to read all of that in and generate bindings. So if I do macro expand, check that out. So this has gone and written us bindings for the entire library, and it's done. Um, we're gonna we're gonna make a few little changes, um, and that is going to require explaining about these spec files. And I'm gonna need to remember how to specify um, where they go. So I, don't, I might have a let's see if I have a project handy. That will be a good ex explanation for this. But anyway, so um, I'm trying to think of the order to do this in, just for it to be least confusing. What I might actually do is I'll, I'll storm ahead and just um, do this quickly. And then 
I'll be able to explain with the results uh, what we actually did. Let's see if it is here. Um, so we're going to need a spec path um, like this, actually. And we're going to put that not there, but here. Um, and it's going to be lib5 and the ASD. The, we're going to define a module um, called specs. And the, actually, no, we'll just call the module spec because that will match the path name. And that should be all we need to do there. And then I think we can write spec and, whoops, macro expand, component lib5 not found. Of course, because the system is called hi5, not lib5. Sorry about that. One second. System hi5 not found. Wait a second. <laughs> That's a bit odd. Let's let me check my notes and see what I've done wrong. So there's a module. So I should be able to have. Yep, high five. And then well, let's just like explicitly say the path then. It might actually be that I've not uh, reloaded the system. So I'll do that in a second. Let's just do, where is it? Path name and spec. Now I'll bring up this and tell ASDF to reload it. So load system, high five, forks. And it's crashing and I, I'll, that's due to this. So if I expand this now, Right, now we're back to our bindings. But if we go and look in our spec folder, you'll notice a lot has changed. So we originally put this file here, but telling it um, in lib5 uh, that we want the spec path to be spec under high five, it's now used this directory to place all the specs. If we go and have a look at one of these, we can see that this is all the JSON information um, that was returned from uh, from Clang or LLVM. And we can see that it has different spec files for different operating systems because what C2FFI will do, it says Clang, hey, compile this, like an analyze this as if it were for Windows, for BSD, for Linux, for Mac, and all these things. And then it dumps specs files out for each one of them. and they obviously have subtle differences in how um, like fundamental types might be defined and things like this. But the size of those fundamental types are dictated by your compiler and, and things like that. So these spec files are the kind of per platform information that you need to generate this stuff. And here we get to the point of thinking about what our, um, our users are going to experience. We want them to just feel like they're using a Lisp library. They don't have to have them worry about setting up a compiler, setting up, sorry, setting up a C++ compiler, setting up C2FFI and all those kind of things. We want to ship them just enough information that they can have the bindings. And the way we do this is by shipping the spec files. If they've got the spec files, they don't need to analyze any of the headers or anything like this. So creating these spec files is something we as the library authors do, and then the library consumers um, the macro will just read these spec files and generate the bindings for them on demand. And that means that they don't have to have all the dependencies we do. And this is just a really nice, um, yeah, this is just a really nice thing. So you don't have to, like if people come in wanting to do Lisp and then you have to say, well, that's great. Now install the C compiler or set up this or do this binding generation thing. And it turns people away. And it's not just academic. I had my friends run into exactly the same thing and just kind of went, you know what? I'm going to leave comma Lisp for now. There's too much C in it, which was it was a shame, really. So anyway, we have a thing that allows us to generate um, spec files, and we ship the spec files, and from those, um, we generate the bindings. And what's nice is we don't have to do anything. We don't have to change our code depending on whether our user has uh, C2FFI and everything set up there. Um, all that happens is if... CL auto wrap loads and goes, hey, I can't find C2FFI, then it expects there to be a spec file ready for it. 
and it will use that spec file. Otherwise, if C2FLI is there, it'll analyze the header and regenerate the spec files and all that kind of stuff, which is cool. Okay, so now everything looks groovy, um, but we are going to compile this and we're going to run into a problem. It says te names, uh, t names a defined constant cannot be used as a local. And this is where we start running into one of the things that is a bit more tricky about CL auto wrap is that, yeah, it's really cool that this macro generates all the bindings, but that means you have to macro expand in order to see anything that it's done. And you also have to be used to some of the auto wrap internals to know what all this stuff is for. If you've used CFFI, it's kind of similar. Um, I'm, I think, um, RPATH might have written this as um, CFFI didn't encode all the information that he was getting from um, from from Clang. Um, I'm not entirely sure because there are things in here like um, like a, a bit alignments and stuff like this. And alignment information, I don't think we have a way of encoding in uh, CFFI. It hasn't been a major problem, but yeah, it's just a thing to bear in mind. And also, auto rep handles can handle. Um, memory management differently as well. It's got a lot of, excuse me, a lot of fancy features. Not always what you need. So the problem that we got, I wonder if we can actually see it. Let's um, let's open the REPL. We can see that there are some errors and it got as far as, I'm gonna just take a guess because I really don't know what's going on. Lib5 tree const, let's assume it's that. So we'll search in here for this. Yeah, it's around, there's some things called lib. Okay, so here's a foreign function definition. And that's f. Hmm. I can't see what it's complaining about. Because it sounded like um, there was an argument to a function uh, that was named t. Oh, wait a second, look here. I think this is the this specifies the parameters. Actually, yeah, look, here's highlighted down here, params. These are the parameters to this foreign function and it's named t. So there are ways in auto wrap to handle uh, these kind of situations. I think down here it talks about symbol ex exceptions and regexes to create new names and things like this. So we could match on some regex and then generate a new string instead. That will work perfectly well. For this time, we're just gonna hack the header file. So let's go to spec and go to lib5.h and then look for anything named t. Hmm. So probably t comma space, something like that. Let's have a look. Okay, look, here we go, lib5 tree. Here's our get tree const, perfect. Tree get const, sorry. Um, yeah, so this is a problem. So let's just rename anything that's lib5tree t as lib5tree tree. Because the, the argument name really doesn't matter here. It, it's only that all the types are correct and all the signatures are, are fine. So, oh, that one's already named tree. Okay, cool. Ignore those. Oh no, we're just looping now. Excellent, okay. So save that header file and compile again. Hmm. It still doesn't like it. I wonder if we have to go and delete these spec files. Because it's got the spec files, it doesn't need to regenerate them yet. Um, I'm not sure what logic it uses of when to regenerate. So let's uh, expand. We've got new spec files now. Oh yeah, I could have just compiled. And now it passes, okay. So we've got some style warnings. If we look down here, there's some things about invalid type records and things like this. I'm not entirely sure what those are, but I'm gonna make a guess soon. But with that done, Let's go in package lib5 and look at some of the C code um, that they uh, were showing in their examples. So if I come down here, okay, here's, here's a line, lib5 tree x, so this function. Now, we want to do this. When I expanded this, lib5 oops, tree x, I noticed that it um, it makes all the names more lispy. So you can see here there's hyphens instead of underscores. So let's look for that. Let's just go lib five tree. And you can see we've got all our autocomplete and stuff already. X. Down here we can see that 
the signature. It takes no arguments. We hit return. And it's saying it can't find this function. And the reason is, even though we've got our bindings to say, hey, here's all the functions, and like it's defined all the um, FFI calls in and out and all the types we need, we haven't actually told it where the library itself is yet. So we can do that just with CFFI, the way we did before. So in the other stream, sorry. So define foreign library. I'm just checking over at my notes here. Lib5. Um, you can normally, what you normally do is you specify for different platforms what the name of the uh, library would be. Um, so it might be a .so, a .dll, and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to be lazy and just point it at, um, sorry, code. Oh, apparently I can't type this and uh, speak at the same time. I'm just going to point it at the .so file that we just compiled and you know, it'll do. We're not shipping this today. It's good for a test. Uh, so lib5 build, incorrectly spelled build, lib5 source lib5.so. Now, one thing is that in the, when you're specifying the default, you don't specify the um, extension. So with that done, I can compile this, and that's define the foreign library, and then we just have to say use um, oh yeah, so it's CFI, use foreign library, lib5, and we're done. Recompile this, lots of little warnings, run this, and now we've called our C code, and we've got something back. Um, so if we just inspect this, we can see that this is some, some wrapper around a pointer. And so for more information on what you're actually getting back, I really recommend looking at CL auto wrap itself so we can tell you these kind of things, but um, we have something that we can start working with C libraries just by writing, essentially, let's have a look at what we wrote so far. I bet we can fit, fit it all in one column. Um, maybe you have to cheat. Well, yeah, if we ignore this useless stuff up here, we wrote this to depend on auto wrap. We wrote this to define uh, where the specs, um, to define the directory and give that a, a specific name in ASDF. We wrote these packages, um, and then we wrote this, and that gave us working bindings to a C library, which is awesome. So we can do lib5 that, and let's do, so let's do, let's, uh, blah. Therefore, x, therefore, y. What's this stuff? Let's have a look at these. This seems to use one of those objects. Um, Let's try this. So, get rid of all this bit. Don't need that. Lib5 tree. Ugh. Unary. Lib5 opcode enum square. And we're going to pass in x that we had before. Seems to be working. Which is pretty dope considering we've been here for about for less than half an hour and a lot of that was me yakking. So if you were doing this, you'd be done 10 minutes max. Which is so cool when you want to try something out. Um, and again, with a bit of attention and cleanup and things like this, this is could be like nice raw bindings ready to ship. Get it into um, Quicklisp and, uh, and you're good to go. Now we did see... Some warnings. I think I'm just going to actually quickly check the chat and have some coffee, and then we'll get back to the uh, the warnings and various things. Um, Sletz has got the video. Good job. I know that was 20 minutes ago, but I'm still happy you're here. Um, Medianne's not driving, so we're all safe. Um, elevator. I want to turn things on and off. I'll keep doing that. Um... Arusus, Arusus, not sure. Hello. Um, <laughs> Dara is saying, laughing at the idea of being able to do this. Which bit was weird? Because I'm happy to go. I know I'm a kind of. This is a kind of free form ramble rather than one of the tighter little bits of Lisp. So if there's anything odd, let me know, and I'll, I'll happily explain any of it. But we do have some bindings. And we like the one thing that was a little funky 
is that when we compiled this, we saw a lot of this invalid type record. Now, I'm not 100% sure on what this is, but I have a good guess. And it's down to the fact that um, CFFI, at kind of out of the box uh, default CFFI as you quick, kind of quick load it, doesn't handle passing um, structs as like by value uh, to foreign functions. And so there is a library to help with that kind of, kind of stuff called up here, libffi. And it's used by many languages, including Python and stuff like this to handle um, um, FFI related stuff. And when you use this, you can then, um, yeah, you can start passing structs as va by value rather than just by reference. So I'm thinking those weird records might be related to this. So I could pull this in. Um, I'm wondering what else it could be actually. Let's just let's just open this up and look for one of those record kind of things. Uh, invalid type record. I don't know what. Ah, but it's a pointer to a record. That's kind of weird. I mean, I would have expected that to be fine. So it doesn't like pointers to structs. We can pass in and out no problem. It's just passing struct by value that's been an issue. So let's have a look at the spec and look at uh, lib5.h and see what we're passing in or out here. Um, and it seems to be having a thing with lib5 pixels, but that's defined up here. So it's kind of weird that it's having an issue there. Valid type record. That is odd. I would have expected that to work. I must admit, this is the first time I've like tried to wrap this library. So I'm not sure. I, I, I haven't done enough research to find out what the caveats, because there's often something you'll find, which is a bit kind of a uh, bit weirdy. Um, so yeah, what about this one? Contours delete. What is that? Uh, the uh, thing it's having issues with there. is a function that returns void, so that's the void, and it takes one argument, which is a lib, a pointer to a lib5 contours. How strange. Why is it having issues with that? Yeah, it, it definitely doesn't have a, um, a definition for that record, so I can understand that it's freaking out. So maybe there's something in the uh, lib5 contours struct. Well, it's not gonna be lib5 contour, because that's here. So it's probably um, uint32t, um, which could mean it's related to this stuff. So yeah, C standard ints. I think that is probably the header that we're missing. So let's have a look to see if we can find um, how to include an extra header file with this. Um, includes, dun, 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 dun. let's see if there's anything here. There's got to be something for that. One of the ways I end up uh, working with this stuff is to, um, oh look, here we go, include sources. Is I end up looking at projects that have already done it. I go into GitHub and search for uh, projects using CL Auto Wrap and check what they do. Another one that has uh, that's I kind of use as a source, let me just get some of this out of the way, is uh, SDL2. So if I look up at CL SDL2, go into the source folder, close that one, don't need that. You can see that they're using auto wrap and we can go in here and see a much more in depth um, include, uh, C include here. But let's bring up ours, where's lib5. This Here is our little dinky one here. Um, actually, this is perfect. This, this will help us out a lot. Um, and here's standard int as well. Is that the one we were looking for a second ago? Because if it is, C standard int, hmm. Well, let's just try it. Let's see what happens if we do this. Yeah, fuck it. Let's, let's do that. And expand it. And then go and look for some of the things. Lib5 contours. Still has invalid type record. So I'm guessing that um, it hasn't found that type yet. Um, okay, so I wonder if... 
It was just called C standard in, wasn't it? Oh, I'm editing SDL right now. Let's not edit SDL. Um, oh, wait a second. Let's put C standard in here and see how we go. We probably should delete those spec files. So let's do mark, oh, sorry. Mark by regex, spec, delete, yes, gone. Compile this again. Well, let's macro expand it so we can see the result. Nope, still invalid type record here. Um, strange. So I'm not sure where C standard in is. I guess I could run locate on that. Ah, so that's interesting. It's a um, it's C plus plus stuff. Well, let's see. Let's have a look. If we just add this to our, whoops, let's get rid of that. To our things to include. I assume we can use absolute paths, not really sure. Oh, there's SDL2 here as well, we don't need that. I'm gonna go and delete the specs again. I'm pretty sure that you don't have to delete these every time, but now I'm becoming paranoid about it. I'm just gonna do that anyway. Recompile this. And no, we've still got that problem. Boo. Any ideas, anyone? Oh, thank you, Medigan, for putting some of the links in the chat. I should actually do that. Let's let's do a so you've already put lib5 there. You've already put auto wrap. Let's get a um, C2FFI. Um, let's get... These guys will come to later for reasons. Um, standard int dot h and C standard int should basically be the same. Yeah, I kind of hope that as well. So it's a bit of a bummer that we haven't got this stuff. But... I hope it kind of gets across the general idea. We've got, um, we've got the start of a project at least. Now, we, uh, I want to talk about. Um, oh, actually, what I will do. Come on, let's let's, let's do this as well. We, since we talked about it, um, CL auto wrap. It was uh, libffi, wasn't it? That we just had to stick on the end. C auto wrap. Uh, libffi. Here we go. Cool. Let's load up the project. Force a reload. Lots of style warnings. Still lots of invalid type records, so I don't think that helped. Um, I'll just do that again to check the... Uh, oh, Jesus. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. This is one of the things that kind of bugs me. I reloaded this and it was freaking out uh, when it was compiling um, this package. Say, probably saying that it, oh no, compile file error while compiling package. Oh, why? Oh, let's have a look. Lib5 also exports all of these. So one of the slightly annoying things with um, def package is it's really not very friendly to recompilation. Um, if, you re if you haven't written, okay, so if, if you've done your exports all here and then you change something in your exports, it'll freak out. Or, as in our case, um, CL Auto Wrap has written all the exports of the symbols uh, from this package. And now we're recompiling def package and it says that there are no symbols exported, so it starts freaking out. Um, I much prefer to use UIOP's define package. The syntax is very similar, other than there are actually a few extensions and it is a lot friendlier to recompilation. So now I'll bring back up the REPL and do this and it won't freak out on the package now. Let's just see. Skipping determine the basic type of foreign type ugh, due to invalid foreign type. Ugh. Okay, that didn't help. This is one of the reasons you want to do this as a, like the, as a library 
author rather than pushing this out to your users because the de the debugging experience isn't as uh, isn't as friendly as even doing in uh, C++ because you're inside another language. So yeah, once you've got things set up, everything's fine. But before then, it can be a little painful. So we're probably going to call it, like this is as far as we're gonna get right now without paying too much attention. Um, so let's have a talk about alternatives. Um, and before digging into that, more coffee and more of you guys. Pond of Pimps congratulating Medi and that for uh, keeping the links coming. Thank you. Something related to structs. Something related to structs. Are you, if you're talking about uh, links and stuff, I suppose we could link to um, libffi, um, which is cool. Here we go. This will just tell you a bit about libffi itself. And um, then it, we can just know that it, it uses that to um, handle passing structs by value. One of, okay, so yeah, let's let's start breaking down issues. One of them we've seen already uh, with order wrap is that because everything's inside that macro, it can be quite hard to debug. Um, I like to be able to jump to definition of functions to be able to have a look at their arguments and things like this. Uh, because even though we get signatures um, down in here, like down in the, um, what am I saying? Down in the, why is it gone? The mini buffer, Fair. brain going dead there. Even though we get um, signatures down in the mini buffer, we don't get the types. And so as someone like writing code that needs to pass in the right pointer, um, I like to be able to jump to definition and see what things are. When I jump to definition, I get to this macro. And that's as far as I can see without macro expanding. And then I have to look through that macro expansion, find the thing I want, and I have to do that every time I'm doing a function. That can be quite tedious. Um, in fact, I found it very tedious in other projects. One of the other things that is easier to, to look at here is like we've already mentioned, um, this project doesn't use CFFI. It has its own... Um, FFI abstraction over what is available underneath. And that's cool if you want to go and learn that. And there are uh, there, are, there are libraries there for helping you do things. But it's an extra bunch of stuff to learn. It's, there, there are stylistic reasons why you might not like it or might like it. I've, I've had issues every now and again with certain choices in there. And I know of other people who have too. Um, as we've already seen, when it returns a pointer, it likes wrapping it up in another type, in a Lisp type. So it's like a struct with a pointer field inside it. I'm not a big fan of that because, again, I don't want to be allocating more things than I have to. A lot of the time I'm using a C library because I want to avoid things on the garbage collector because I want that kind of raw speed that's there as well. And so anything that makes that boundary cost even more expensive than it already is is kind of, uh, it doesn't quite sit well with me. Um... But, again, I don't want this to be in any way taken as anything disparaging it. It's auto wrap. Auto wrap is amazing. And the fact what, what it's let people do really quickly has made the Lisp, especially the Lisp uh, gaming's commu gaming community, a much more active place. It's really cool. So, like I like say, all the SDL bindings, for example, the SDL2 bindings are done using auto wrap. And it's, it's great. It's really cool. However, there's always room for another approach. And with Lisp, there is often another approach. So let's look at one of those. And one of the kind of competitors, if you like, is the awkwardly named, let's bring up a rebel because it's just easier to type, CFFI, C2FFI. All right, this is another binding generator. Um, it's part of the CFFI project. So as you can imagine, it generates CFFI code rather than auto wraps um, kind of abstraction. I'm sorry that I can't remember the name, um, especially if RPAV you're watching. Sorry, I forgot the name of um, the binding thing that you're using inside order wrap. I'm not sure if it's just called order wraps, define foreign function and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, this is going to generate CFFI code and we'll see that it does it slightly differently as well. In fact, I've already got a project set up for this. 
Um, uh, Elevate Simulator is asking, is there any reason not to use auto wrap? Um, yes, like the, the ones I was just saying. Sorry, I'm kind of slow on the comments, but yeah. So let's go and have a look at a project. Uh, we made High Five. Um, and so before the stream, I made Higher Five, which is just another approach at this. Um, we're going to see that this one likes to do a lot more stuff in the ASD. Um, ASDF, the package, uh, sorry, the, the build system um, that's most commonly used inside um, inside Common Lisp is very extensible. And so the folks that made uh, CFFI, C to FFI, uh, this is going to be said a lot and it's really annoying, um, have hooked into ASDF for specifying all the details. But there are some things that are slightly similar. So let me just bring up the directory. We can see that we've got a spec folder and I've got the uh, lib5.h here as well. Um, we're specifying that we've got a few things up here. We've got def system depends on, and we just depend on that system. Um, this forces this to be loaded, um, to be built, sorry, before we even start processing the rest of this def system. I think I'm not that great at ASDF which is why I haven't done any videos on it or anything like that. But anyway, yes, like before it can go any further, it needs this. And that's so um, that the, the extensions to ASDF that are being used here are, have been built already. Then it depends on CFFI, CFFI C2 FFI, and CFFI lib FFI. And as you can guess from this part of the name, this thing is using C2 FFI 2. So this library that our path made that uses clang to dump out that json stuff we're using the same thing and so we've got the same information available so i'm um, again like even if you're not a big fan of cl auto wrap um huge huge thanks have to go to our for what for the work he's done in the list community uh for getting this stuff made it's really awesome so yes this is another approach we're gonna um depend on this we've uh we're setting these dependencies too. We've got a lib FFI here as well. And then um, we specify, uh, let's have a look. Yeah, we specify the header file um, inside the spec module. So it's looking in that spec directory. We specify the C2 FFI executable. Um, it needs to know where that is. So I've just put, uh, I've just like absolute path here, hard coded it in. Um, we'll come back to C2 FFI paths actually because I skipped over that and that was a bad thing to skip. So please remind me about that. Um, it says that the package that the generated stuff is going to be in is in higher5.lib. So let's have a look. Let's go and look at the package file. Excuse me. So we can see higher5.prelude, higher5.lib, and higher5 itself. So I'm expecting this is where I'm going to put my high level Lisp. API that my users will use. This is where the generated bindings are going to go. And these are some functions that need to be defined before I do this. So you can see here that I load, because serial is set, it's going to um, load these files um, in order. So it's going to load package, this guy. It's going to load prelude, which we'll come to soon. We can see it has one function in here called the FFI name transformer. And then it's going to load. Um, it's going to load this, which is where it actually generates the bindings. So we specify the package that the binding is going to be generated in. We specify the foreign library name. So this is. Um, we'll, we'll see all this stuff soon, but we're just going to call it lib5, and it's going to be in higher5.lib. Um, FFI name transformer, that's the name of that function we saw in the prelude. Again, we'll get back to what that's for. This is optional, so we'll, we'll, we will have a look at that. Um, I'm not including any extra sources, and I'm just hard coding again where the actual library is. Um, this is, you'll, you'll see a lot of similarities between our high five dot lib five dot list. See how this is exactly the same here? Again, there's a reason for that. It's going to be put in almost verbatim. 
and the um, the other things we had to specify down here before we would we had to write our own define foreign library and use foreign library we won't have to do that in this version um, we have to provide the path to the header file that's just provided here so let's close inferior lisp and open slime and quick load higher five it compiles it's finished and if we go and look at spec we can see that we've got all the spec files just like before but in here as well there's a lisp file and it matches the name of this spec and if we open that up we will see something rather nice there are a whole lot of bindings and they're all just cffi code which is fucking great so yes this is a uh, this is this is where we can get going um so we get the same kind of thing but because it's using ffi sorry cffi we can use the stuff we learned in the other streams and what we might be using in other projects i'm just seeing questions come in Sorry, by the way, why build with 2i in foreign library spec? Let's have a look. Oh, sorry. That was a typo when I, I built the library earlier. Um, yeah, when I, when I downloaded lib5 and I, I typed make dear build, but just spelt build wrong like an idiot because I was rushing half an hour before doing this stream. I'm just like, ah, I've got to get the C library built. So yeah, it's build. Um, which is probably how I was sounding at the time. So yeah, once again, generated bindings. Just like with um, CL auto wrap, if, you, if your user doesn't have C2FFI set up locally, that's not a problem because it's going to use the spec files, which is really cool. So you get all those benefits. And also, if you wanted to, you could just ship the Lisp files. Um, and I just love this because again, like let's uh, let's bring up the REPL and get to uh, in package higher five dot lib, All right? And let's do that stuff we were doing earlier. So just a simple call. Where is it? Something simple. There we go. We've got a result again, but notice this time um, we've just got this. Um, this is SB from Steel Bank Common Lisp. Sys which is one of the internal SB Sys is one of the internal packages, and um, int sap is a system area pointer. This is actually just a pointer. Um, really, I can't just inspect value. All right, okay. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, um, this is just a pointer. I wonder if I can inspect it by, whoops, right click, inspect. Okay, fine, yeah. But anyway, this is a raw pointer. It's not boxed in anything else, which means you didn't pay for the allocation of that boxing and all that kind of stuff, which is really dope. Um, yeah, I really like that. I'm looking here as well, and I'm seeing that um, the contours structs that we were having issues with in the in seal auto wrap is also an issue here, which is kind of interesting. Um, so I guess we'll have to use include sources and stuff like that to to fill in the gaps. So I really like this. Oh yeah, here's the here's the uh, benefit that we wanted to get through of um, why use this and not the other one. Um, if I look at the signature for lib five tree unary down here, I can see it takes an op and an a. I can jump to definition and I can see the op is an int and a is a lib5 tree. And that alone honestly makes such a huge difference when binding a large library. Um, so one of the uh, one of the projects I was doing, which is very much not finished, uh, I think I brought it up on one of the, the um, streams before, was bindings for the um, nuclear physics library, which is just a great 3D physics engine. Um, so you can see in here, there's a load of spec files. And if we go into here in the, um, these are the 
generated bindings for um, Darwin. And we can see a lot of stuff. Stuff, again, you really wouldn't want to write this all by hand. It would take a long time. It's taking a long time to scroll through it. Um, so yeah, it's really cool, but the combination of that with being able to jump to definition, I think is lovely. So then once you've got your uh, generated bindings, then you go and write um, your own package on top of it. So I'd like to do, um, to make up a system, which is just the raw bindings. So just let the uh, generator run, export all the symbols, and then say, cool, that's that. Um, and then start another project like, what did I call it? I think it was called Isaac. And in here, um, I write loads of Lisp functions which wrap all the C functions and um, are a lot more optimized. So, a few things to talk about still. One of the weirdnesses from Higher 5 was we had this thing called an FFI name transformer. And we had a prelude file. And the prelude, um, so basically by default, um, CFFI C2FFI is not going to transform the names. So if they have an underscore in them, they'll have an underscore in the in the Lisp name. If they have, if if the name is just T, then it's going to be T in the other one. This is actually really cool. Um, we're not using it here. In fact, maybe we should. Maybe we should just get rid of this. Um, name transformer, get rid of that, and comment this out, because we don't need it. I'm going to get rid of those spec files again, just because, and all of those are gone, and I'm going to quick load higher five, oh, no, it doesn't like that, okay, let's refresh and rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. Hire5.lib does not designate a package. What? Why? Did I change the wrong thing? I have this horrible feeling I changed the wrong thing. Nope. Hire5.lib should definitely be a package. That's strange. It does do package first. Oops. Something I'm missing here. Error finding package for symbol def package. Can anyone spot what I'm doing wrong? Hmm. Okay, it was happier with that, and I'm not entirely sure why. I think it might have been that package was built too late for this, but hmm, not too sure. Let's go back into our uh, generated stuff anyway and have a look at. Ooh, yeah. Come on, Lisp in there somewhere. Here we go. Notice now that all of the names have underscores in them, and you'll see a lot of um, pipes at the beginning and end of names. This is how you tell Lisp uh, to use normally illegal characters um, in its names. So normally foo and bar are separate symbols. But if you do foo bar, that is one symbol with a name with a space in it. Don't do that. Just don't do it. What is cool about this though, if we do jump to, um, to this, is the, the code that we're going to write now much is a much closer match to the C code we're looking at. And that's just a little less overhead for the brain. So if I just copy this function name as is and put it here, it doesn't work because I've done something wrong. What have I done wrong? <laughs> oh, hey, by removing that package definition, now it's at the package to nil. Well, that fucking sucks. So let's go back to ASD. I wonder what it is about that package that it just doesn't dig. ASDF force. Uh, 
Ah, oh, I have to delete those again and regenerate. That's rather annoying. So I'll have to look into that to find out what that issue is, because I haven't ha I don't recall having this before. Oh, wait a second, we're getting problems again with us using def package. So one second, let's let's do this. Ah, oh, I can't type for shit. Right. I oh, now I've really messed it up. <laughs> oh yeah, this will be faster. Let's use these fancy features that we're not very good at. Def package. So it's define package. There we go. Right. Anyway, let's load this, and now it's freaking out about what? What? Oh, we did save package, didn't we? No, we didn't. Let's reload it again. Okay, that time it worked. Um, I did see a lot of warnings in there again for... Uh... Oh, I'm mean, such an idiot. I'm loading high five, and I'm wondering why higher five isn't working. I'm sorry. Let's load this again. I'm a bug. Right. Higher five. There, that works just fine. It's good when you don't name libraries so similarly that you get confused. Let's go back to higher5.lib. And now I can try and make the point I was meant to be making, which is that when names are very similar, it can be really nice. Um, oh god, has it happened again? It has. It has. Did we not save this file either? Come on, Chris. Right. Please. Let's do this. Did it generate a new file? Yes, it did. So now we can go into here. Now we can bring up this file. Now hopefully I can bring up this function and say, look with the underscores. But it's not working. It says that's undefined. For fuck's sake. What have I done? That's weird, actually, because it is... Ah, uh, yes, of course, because... This is a kind of annoying thing. Um, it's named the function exactly the same, which means it's lowercase. So I'm having to specify it like this for it to recognize it. Hmm, not so great. So what we might want to do is transform the names, and that's what that name transformer um, that we saw in the ASD was for. So let's do that again. Um, let's go back here and say, hey, name transformer in the higher five prelude FFI name transformer. Let's open up the prelude file. And we uncomment this function. Now what this was doing was it was just upcasing the name and then it was changing any time it saw an underscore, it was replacing it with a uh, hyphen. But we won't do that for now. We will just uppercase the name. Now this could potentially cause um, name conflicts. If your C library has um, foo uppercase and foo lowercase, that can matter. So do be careful with this stuff. But there's a lot of times when it will work just fine. So if I load... Ah, now we're getting back into issues with variable t. Okay. I think we're running into some new issues now that we've uppercased things, because there was probably an argument called t in there. Oh, no. It's got something it didn't like, but we'll find out what soon. Higher five lib. And this time, maybe... Yes, we can specify lib5 underscore tree x. And it's been upcased by the transformer. So now that just works. Cool. So sorry that was kind of a horrible, messy kind of walk to that last point. But uh, but yeah, that's the general idea is that in this you can specify your own functions, just like in CL auto wrap, to replace names. It's done in a slightly different way because everything is defined from the ASDF file. Um, in my mind, this is a little uglier um, than just doing it in a macro. But at the same time, what's really nice is because it's built into the build, we can generate Lisp files, which are then um, included in the project build, which is really good. Another thing 
actually, that while I remember that's nice, is because we can jump to, um, because the definitions are all like unrolled like this, we can do um, control C, control K to build the whole file. And if there are any um, style warnings or any warning at all, it's going to be highlighted and you can jump to that issue directly, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, that's what we've got there. And let's have a look. Um, new bestseller, how to live well with your typos. Yes, I should write that. Um, <laughs> oh, serious. Yeah, how to live well with your typos by baggers spelt with two R's. I like that a lot. Is there any reason to use CL auto wrap instead of CL, um, CFFI, C2FFI, except the vastly superior name? I think it's a case of preference. Um, I haven't found any major technical reason yet. Um, Let's have a think. No, I'm not too sure about that, to be honest. I, I can't think of anything immediately. Um, yeah, it is very much a preference thing. And I think when, like, I think C CFFI, C2FFI, I think that came around after um, CL Auto Wrap. Because assuming, like, seeing as they were both made by RPAV, uh, C2FFI, I'll just point at it. Seeing as this was made by RPAV and then this was made by RPAV, I'm pretty sure that this stuff came out first. And then the CFFI guys said, hey, this shit's really cool, but um, we'd like to use our own FFI since we've got one of those already. And it plays well with everything that already exists. Um, See, so yeah, I must admit, I lean in this direction, um, but I haven't shipped any projects yet using this. So I, there, there might be some things that I don't know about, which are kind of big caveats. Cool. Right. We're at nine o'clock now, seven minutes past nine. Is there anything else we can cover? Like, please fire questions at me because I'm thinking of kind of wrapping up the little bits of Lisp episode, stopping the stream, starting the stream again so it becomes a separate file, and then just doing a pushing pixels with Lisp for the remainder of the time. One, while you're coming up with questions, one thing I will talk about is there are... There is another approach to some of this stuff. Um, and it comes down to, again, portability. So we've got this lovely thing that it generates spec files for all these for all these platforms. And at least for us in the kind of, um, who have been in the kind of Lisp games kind of uh, community, really you're targeting Windows, you're targeting Linux and Mac. And well, Windows first, Mac, and then Linux, as far as like audience is available. I mean, 94, 90, like five percent of all gamers on Steam are on Windows. So, if you're trying to, if you're, if you're serious about making a game in Lisp, you want to follow your audience. So, really, this covers those cases really nicely. But it's not a perfect thing. What you would really want, and there are a lot of things that it can't get information for. Like, it can look at a header and get you. Um, it can get, yes, it can get a lot of information, but say the sizes of certain types um, might be a problem. Macros are a problem, like C macros, expanding all of those. I mean, by using Clang, it can do a good job with that stuff. Um, but I'm still pretty sure there are things that it can't get there. One of the ways um, that you can do is using, <laughs> point of it saying, plan nine's not covered, bah, or meh. Um, yes. Um, you can use something called the Groveler. And the Groveler is a separate project uh, from CFFI, but is connected. It's a um, it's heavily related to it. And what it does is you define, you write a specification file. I'm not sure if I've got any example of this around. I was modifying it at one point, so mine will be slightly wrong, but let's have a look. Um, that works. Uh, let's have a look. Lib. Lib spec. Okay. I think this was it. So you define this little specification and 
Let's see if I can find an example of its output. No, I can't find a good example. But basically, you write a specification, um, and then it will generate a C program that will um, that print out all the kind of sizes of types and the um, values uh, that macros expand to and all this kind of stuff. And it will compile that C program, and then it will run it to get all that information back into Lisp. Um, and then you have the actual sizes from the actual C compiler on your machine. And that's really powerful. If you want something that gives you the absolute correct result on whichever platform you're on, the Groveler is, is the answer, pretty much. Now, the problem, of course, is then your users have to have a um, C compiler set up properly on their machine, which for Linux is no big deal. Um, on Windows, I find that thing more of a pain in the ass, just generally, and I don't want to have to fight Windows to get a dev environment set up. I very much use Windows as a consumer um, and out of like like requirements rather than want to use it. So the Groveler is an awesome piece of tech, but it puts a lot of work onto your onto the consumers of your library, onto other programmers. Now the argument that I've heard is, well, you're a programmer, just fucking deal with it, kind of thing. Like if you like, who doesn't have a C like like compiler set up, blah blah blah, that kind of thing. I don't like it. I don't like that experience for my users. And again, debugging build errors from C build errors from inside Lisp is more annoying than debugging them just from from like a C compiler without Lisp in the way. So I'm I'm not convinced by that thing. And I'm very much in the idea of if you can, if you're building a product like and you can, that is applicable for a certain number of platforms, then it's okay to ship binaries, to ship specification files for those platforms and then fall back to something else on other platforms um, if you need to work everywhere. But it's very unlikely you've got C libraries that do work everywhere. So it's, yeah. Also, of course, your one, like, the sizes of certain types is dictated by your compiler as much as anything else. So whatever you get back is really kind of information local to that compiler, and then you're going to pull in other libraries. Is that definitely going to match up? Odds are yes. Like, it, it, like you're getting things from apt. I mean, they're all compiled in certain ways and things like this. It's not going to be like, oh, size, you know, size T is a completely different integer size on this library to this library it's, it's not going to be a case so you've really got to pick your how correct do i need to be and i tell you what for making games that are shipping on windows mac and linux auto wrap has been great uh cffi is to see to ffi um that has been really good like it, it's acceptable enough it's got the right trade-offs for where i'm at and my users can consume things like keppel things like um well, I didn't make the uh, SDL bindings, but things like that, they can be consumed as Lisp libraries without having to think of uh, anything other than did I install SDL2 um, on my system? Do you know, that's my kind of view and rant about that kind of spectrum. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, There are some Plan 9 Lisps being shown at the moment. Um, kid, nice to see you, man. Heading off to the gym. Well, see you around, maybe online. Um, yeah, so that kind of kind of like brings me to the conclusion of the little tour of things. We in the other stream we looked at um, using CFFI by hand, writing our own bindings. That is very useful in a lot of cases. Um, from there, seal order wrap is like one of the quickest ways just to get something up and running. Um, it's a really excellent tool, and if you like what it provides, here's one reason you might want to use seal order wrap. It can um, I pretty oh no oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was pretty sure that there was some integration to have the garbage collector manage some of the things that are allocated from C, but I'm not sure if that was actually just a, a CLSDL2 thing. And they've removed that now. I would highly recommend against using the Lisp garbage collector to manage any foreign resources at all. Um, you're using C. Treat it like C, manage it like C, 
Yeah. So yeah, I think that might be the lot for now. So I hope this was help. I'm sorry that some of it was quite rambling and we kind of bodged our way through a lot of errors. Um, I would like to go deeper into some of those unknown uh, records uh, issues that we saw there. Um, but it's nothing dramatic. It's going to be including the right source so it knows the type that was missing and then it can just continue. Um, so I'm going to just stop the stream momentarily. I'm going to be right back um, in like a minute or so and then we're going to start straight off trying to use this thing. Uh, so we're going to actually dig into what... Um, or I'll start looking into what that foreign record thing might be because we're going to need it. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this little bit of Lisp and I'll see you in a second. <laughs> 